Well, once again, everybody, welcome to Elevate. Good to see all of you in the house. How many of you guys are planning on watching the Cavs game? You're hoping in like a half hour. <laughs> so, yeah, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be great. I'm, I'm expecting them to win. I wore my Klee on Fire shirt for multiple purposes, that being one. But I'm excited for tonight. I'm happy to be here. Before we begin, I want to ask you guys a question like I, like I like to do so many times. How many of you guys in this room here tonight are cooks? Do you like to cook? Really? You guys are crazy. You like cooking. You really enjoy it. Really? Wow. Well, I am somebody that like kind of wants to be a good cook, but I fail at it miserably. Is there anybody like that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, this, this, uh, this past week I was looking and I came across these really funny pictures on the internet that I wanted to share with you guys, which kind of shows the story of my life. Well, let me just, let me just show you. Here we go. Okay. That's the expectation at the top of what you want. And that fat hedgehog on the bottom with the weird teeth is what you got when you made it. You know what I'm saying? Okay, let's go to the next one. Yeah, that's probably better. <laughs> what one? The demented one on the bottom or the top one? Go ahead, let's see the next one. Oh, wow. Obviously, who said the right one looks better? Well, you guys are crazy. You, you got the left, that's your expectation. The right, that's the reality. It's terrible. Go ahead and go to the next one. Oh, the chickens literally just blew up. Okay, how about the next one? No. Oh. That looks like a demon-possessed Pikachu on the right. Okay, do we have any more? Okay, this one is the most disturbing because it's literally Justin Bieber made of bacon and ground beef. And I just, I don't understand why. Can you show the next one? Oh, okay. Isn't that what you want to see Christmas morning? Awesome. Okay, I'm going to stop there. The reason I wanted to show you guys this is because of something like this happened to me in real life. Now, I wasn't trying to, and this was like a week ago. This isn't, you know. But I wasn't trying to make some fancy schmancy decoration of Justin Bieber. All I was trying to do was make some ravioli. I'm not kidding. And I just had some frozen ravioli, and I, I was, you know, boiling, trying to get the water to boil, whatever. And I put the ravioli in it. And wouldn't you think that that would be easy? Like, I read the pack. I boil the water. I put the ravioli in. It's fine. It's good. It's dandy. So I literally take the ravioli. I put it in. And a couple of minutes later, I, I kid you not, the ravioli literally starts disintegrating. I'm not kidding. It's literally, uh, what are you, evaporating? It's not water. I don't know what's happening. It's literally disappearing. It's breaking up in chunks. It's like somehow, I'm like, where is the ravioli? And it's literally just disappearing. And it's like, what happened? <laughs> it was really bad. It was ridiculous. So I go back and I read the directions, right? And the directions are telling you that you need to have a steady boil. I just put it in when the water got a little bit hot. Hence, the disintegrating ravioli. And the terrible thing is, I'm like, Jordan, come home, dinner's gonna be ready. I'm like, holy crap! I'm trying to grab all these other things, trying to make it work. I mean, it was terrible. What happened? Well, there was something that could have been really easy, but I made it really hard because I didn't follow it the right way. It could have been real easy. It could have been real simple. I could have had ravioli, a happy Jordan, a happy summer. It could have went a lot faster. But the problem was I did it in a different direction, a different order, and it came out the wrong way. And you know what? When it comes to our walk with God, I think a lot of us are like that. We have this, we have this expectation. We have this want to do something really great, to make something really awesome happen. But when we start working on it, all of a sudden things start falling apart. I have this intention where I want to have these experiences that everybody talks about and elevate that you see other people going through. I want that thing. I want to have that life, but I'm more like the disintegrating ravioli. Is anybody honest? This is the thing I want, but I've got the non-existent ravioli. I've got the demon-possessed Pikachu in my life. That's what I'm dealing with. My idea is one thing. I'm getting another thing. So what happens? Well, I think that it's what happens with anything. We steer away from what the directions really are. 
we steer away from what it was supposed to look like in the beginning with, and we adjust it just a little bit, but when you adjust it just enough, you get disintegrated ravioli. When you adjust it just enough, you get a cake that turns out looking uh, demon-possessed. When you, you get a, a, a Justin Bieber of bacon that looks scary. When you shift things a bit, when it's not meant to be shifted, it turns into something completely different that you didn't want. And I think that that's what happens in our walk with God. We slowly shift and we tilt this Christian life from what it was meant to be. And when we do that, it creates a mess that sometimes we don't even know how to clean it up. And so tonight, I wanna try to help you guys out. I don't, I'm gonna help you, Tyler, because I don't want you to try to make ravioli and you know, all this stuff happening. And I don't want you to do your Christian walk the wrong way and it's five years down the road, it's a year down the road, it's tomorrow and you're like, what has happened to my life? We need to get back to the basic instructions, the basic thing that the Bible has to say. And can I tell you guys one thing? This Christian walk, no matter what happens, no matter what it goes through, no matter where you're at on your Christian walk, whether you've just found God, whether you have found God for five years, whatever it's going, the simple thing that your Christian walk should look like is I love Jesus. I love love Jesus, period. If you just got saved, if you've just been living your whole life, I love Jesus. That's the basic instruction. And when we complicate it, and we try to put all this other stuff in it and try to get all this other stuff from it, we start to get consequences that we don't really wanna see. We start to get things happen that we don't really wanna see. You see, my fear is that maybe some of us, if we're honest, we have fallen in love with the culture of church and not the person of Jesus. I have fallen in love with the idea of church. I get to come on Elevate and I get to eat from the cereal bar and I get to beat Ben at Foursquare and the worship songs come on and, uh, okay, whoa, I poked a nerve there. Okay, Ben, okay. I get to come in and the worship happens and I'll just come in and I'll just lift my hands. And I'll just sit during the message. And it becomes a culture and it becomes a routine and it becomes this whole thing. And, but have I fallen for the culture and not for Jesus Christ? Because if I haven't fallen in love truly with Jesus Christ, then I've missed it. I've missed the mark. And whether it's tomorrow, whether it's a couple days from now, whether it's a couple years from now, if I don't have that as my foundation, as my basis, a true love for Jesus Christ, it will fall apart because that's what it's built off of. That is the Christian walk. Don't believe me? Good, let's take a look at what the Bible says. It says this, in Matthew 22, 36 to 37, it says, teacher, this is some dude asking God, asking Jesus. Teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? And Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, in all your mind. This is not some Joe Smo. This is not Don Andre talking. This isn't Tyler, even though he's cool. Oh my gosh, it's getting weird in here. This literally comes from somebody asking Jesus, hey Jesus, what is the single most important thing? What is it? What is it? What am I supposed to do? Wouldn't that be awesome if you had Jesus in front of you and you're like, Jesus, what should I do? He's like, I'm gonna tell you. Well, we, we, we have it right here. We have his response. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. What does that mean? Jesus is saying it's gotta be fully about God. It has to be every single part of you in love with God. It's gotta go into your emotions. It's gotta go into the depths of you. It's gotta go into every circumstance. It's gotta be a love that penetrates deeper than just words. That penetrates just deeper than an idea. That is the love that God longs for. That's what he is saying the most important thing is. That's, what is he saying? He's saying, I desire more than anything, your love. I desire your love more than anything. You know what we forget sometimes is that God is God, but God also has a heart. He has emotions. He can be pleased. He can be discouraged. He can be hurt. 
But what pleases him is when we love him. And I'm not talking about, oh, I, I love Jesus, because everybody says that. I love Jesus. I'm like, okay, really? I love Jesus. Do you love Jesus or do you just love what he can do for you? I love Jesus. Do you just love that he makes you feel like you have a ticket to heaven? I love Jesus. Or do you just love that you get goosebumps in worship? Or do you love him? Love. You guys know what it's like when, when, when people are in love, when you get around them, you can just tell that they love each other. Would people say that about you in every area of your life, that the way that you talk, the way that you walk, the way that you spend your time is truly loving Jesus? Or is it loving what he can do? And I, I get it that, that we all want the stuff. We want the peace. We want the joy. We want, we want the goodness. We want to feel good. I understand it. Why? Because we're all so freaking messed up. We're all messed up, so we want to feel peace, we want to feel joy, we want to feel all of these things. But the problem is when wanting to feel the things, and I'm going to go to church because I just want to feel better tonight. I'm going to go to church because I just want to feel some peace. I get it, but that's not what it's about. It's about Jesus. It's about Jesus. You can't just pick and pull the different facets that you want of him. That is not love. I can't even imagine if in my marriage, Jordan was just like, I love you. But all he wanted me to do was cook and clean for him. But all he wanted me to do was, I don't know, rub his big toe. This is the first thing that came to my mind. How ridiculous would that be? I'd be like, bro, you don't love me. You just love what I can do for you. You know what I'm saying? A love of Jesus is a love for who he is. And that's what the Bible says. That's what Jesus says that he's longing for. He is longing for our entire heart, our entire depths, longing to be with him. But, you know, we have to make a decision when it comes to it at some point in our lives that our Christian walk is not about what Jesus can do for us. It's about loving who he is. And I have been there in my life where I have chased after the peace I have chased after the joy. I have chased after the feel good, the tinglies, the feelings, the whatever it is. But can I tell you, even if you get it for a moment, it ends empty. Why? Because it's not how it was supposed to be. It's supposed to be about, I fall so in love with Jesus that it changes who I am and it changes the way that I live. God is longing for your love. He's longing for your love more than anything. But if you're like me, it doesn't always come easy all the time. Is there anybody that's honest? It doesn't always come easy. I might say that I love Jesus with my mouth, but I want to do it like they do in the gospel. The way that they will give their lives, the way that they'll travel wherever, they'll do whatever, that's the kind of love that they have. I want that kind of love in this room tonight. And that's what God is longing for. But the good news is we have Holy Spirit. Isn't that awesome? For those of you who don't know about Holy Spirit, the Bible says that he is our helper. What does that mean? He helps us. We may not have Jesus right here saying, hey, love me with all of this, but we can can get to the word of God. We can read what it has to say, and then we have the Holy Spirit that we can say, hey, I'm having a hard time with this, and what does he do? He helps us. Because the Holy Spirit longs to teach us and lead us to Jesus Christ. And so even if you're in this place tonight where you're like, I don't really know how to love, I don't really know what to do, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit will draw you in deeper. Let's take a look at what the Bible has to say. This verse just made me feel bad. You guys ever read a verse and you're like, I feel bad. Okay, good. That's great. All right. In Philippians 3, 7 to 11, it says this, but whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage. Everybody say garbage. Garbage that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Not having a righteousness of my own, that meaning not being great, not having, a, you know, being okay with God on your own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. 
I want to know Christ. Yes, the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. I mean, that is a lot right there. So let's break it down. You have Paul talking about that he has discovered in this life that everything else is garbage. Everything else is pointless. Why? Because it pales in comparison to knowing Jesus Christ. Everything that he has gained, everything that he has seen, every ounce of popularity, every ounce of comfort, every ounce of relationship, whatever it is, it all stinks compared to knowing Jesus Christ. He would go so far as to say it's garbage. It's garbage when it comes to knowing Jesus Christ. It's garbage. That's the kind of love that I want to have. That's the kind of love that God is longing for us to have. Garbage. Everything else. Trash. It doesn't make sense. For those of you who need a better visual, you guys know I have one. And so, Owen, come on up here. Let's give Owen a round of applause. I don't know if you guys noticed, but he got some new Toms, and he's feeling sassy since he got them. That's all I have to say. All right. So what I have here is a trash can. It's an awkward height, so can you guys see? Good. Okay. Let's back this table up. I have this trash can here, and in the trash can, let's take a look what I have. I have a dirty, rotten banana. Does anybody want it? You're weird. No. I have my container from lunch. What did I get? As always, Sunday ritual, Chipotle. These are the things that we would expect in a trash can, right? Old lunch, dirty banana, dirty underwear. I don't have that in there dirty tissue. These are the things that I would expect to be trash. But what else do I have in my trash can, you may ask? Let's take a look. What do I have? Oh, what is that? What, what movie is it, Jeremy? Are you blind? Get up here. The notebook. The notebook. All the girls say, aww. Aw, I have the notebook in here. Now, why do I have this in here? If I'm Paul, and I have fallen so in love with Jesus Christ. When I look at this and the idea of a relationship, having any sort of comparison, when it comes to Jesus Christ, I say garbage. Everybody say garbage. Why? Because no relationship, no matter how great, no matter how beautiful, no matter how wonderful, can compare to knowing Jesus Christ. Garbage. Amen from Jeremy who's in love with Kylie. Wow. Here we go. Yeah, this. Oh. Now I have something, and this is specifically for me. I have a contour brush, and I never use it, and I never will. And it came, I literally had to take it out of a package. Why am I showing you this? Some of you spend so much time staring at yourself in the mirror trying to get the perfect contour, trying to get the perfect look. For you men, I used beard oil because I don't know. Dion's like, I'll take that. I got these things. Now, these aren't bad things, but when they become the main thing, it becomes a bad thing. You get what I'm saying? And where, did it, where does it belong then? It belongs in the garbage. <laughs> Jeremy, I got something else. Some of you really need to look at this one. Can you see it? Netflix. Netflix. I'm spending all my time binge watching this, binge watching that. You guys can't stop watching it. You can't start obsessing over it. But the problem is when it takes the place of Jesus Christ and the love that he is calling us to have, it needs to go in the garbage. You get what I'm saying? This one, I don't need to say much about it. This is just an iPhone, and uh, what do I say, Jeremy? Obsession, right? We got an iPhone. Paul would say, this is garbage. Why are you spending five to eight hours a day staring at the thing? What would your life look like if you gave that time to Jesus? <laughs> they said, oh. What would it look like? What would it look like if you gave that time over to Jesus Christ? I guarantee you'd grow in your love. Here's the next thing I have. These are weeds. This represents something. I'm not going to bring real weed up here, so we had to pull some weeds. <laughs> here you go. Welcome to church. I got some weeds for you guys. What does that represent? 420, what's wrong with you? I, I didn't want an answer. My gosh. I got a bunch of stuff in here. And keep the trash can away from Shelby. Oh, and will you just, she's trying. 
why am I, why am I saying all this, guys? I'm saying all this because all of the stuff that we're being told by society, by our friends, by our lifestyle, by this generation, is this is all the stuff that you need that's gonna make you happy. You need the lovely weeds from the garden outside. Oh gosh. You need the relationship like the notebook. You need the Netflix, Netflix and chill, no. You need all of these different things and these are all of the things that you need step by step by step by step by step by step. But the truth is, in reality, all of that stuff that we look at and we try to please ourselves with it and we try to put it in the place is garbage compared to knowing Jesus Christ. It is garbage. I'm not talking about knowing about him. I'm talking about knowing him in a relationship capacity, like we've been talking about the last couple weeks, that inner man relationship, that inside connection that you have with Jesus Christ, nothing compares with it. When you have an encounter with Jesus, not just I know about Jesus and what he did on the cross for me, but when you tap into what the Bible is talking about, when you talk, tap into the inner connection, the inner relationship, there is nothing like it, nothing. There's no high. There's no shopping. There's nothing that can take the place. It's garbage. Everybody say garbage. Garbage. And it's hard to explain unless you've been there. It's hard to explain unless you've encountered it. But once you've encountered it, you'll never be the same. Because the love of Jesus Christ shatters every other thing and its value. You know, I heard this amazing story the other day, and it actually didn't happen that long ago. And it happened with a man named John Walker. He was a country man, John Walker. And John Walker was a guy that was harvesting and farming wheat since age six. Age six, the dude's outside, he's in the field, he's working on this, he's working on that, all these things since the age of six. And here he is out there, and that's just his life. He's doing it, it's going great, it's going awesome. All these things are going on. Some of you complain when your parents ask you to take out the trash. John Walker's out there in the field since age six, and he's fine with that, and it's okay. And he's going, and he's going, and he's going, and then all of a sudden, one day, everybody say one day. One day, some dude knocks on his door and says, hey, John Walker, listen, I have a proposal for you. You see, we think that there is oil underneath your land. We think there's oil underneath your land, and if you would give us the ability to be able to drill underneath your property, we'll pay you for it. And John's just a simple guy, and he's like, okay, cool, sounds great. Little did John know that in the first year, it would make him $1.5 million. Now, some of you are like, $1.5 million. If somebody came knocking on your bedroom door and said, hey, can I drill for, you know, in the, in the land and get $1.5 million, you'd be like, yes. That was just the first year. $1.5 million. He gets, and not only that, but the way that the deal worked out, I don't know how this works, is that he was still able to do the farming on top of the surface as well. So he got the best of both worlds. He was able to do what he did his whole life, and then he was able to be able to reap this amazing blessing, so undiscovered, so unheard of, so great. Why do I bring this up? Because when I heard this story, it so reminded me of just how it is in our walk with God. Some of us have settled for this life, and we've been doing it our whole life. We're just working, we're farming, we're doing our thing, we're going to school, we're doing the relationship thing, we're doing the Netflix thing, we're doing the weeds in the garden thing, we're doing all this stuff. But under the surface, there is this thing of so much value <laughs> that if you could get it, it would change your life forever. I'm not talking about money. What I'm talking about in our life is there is this relationship, this God on the inside of us that longs to meet with us, that if we would just get past all of the crap on the surface and just stop doing life the way that we've always done it, but we would let him go deeper and deeper and deeper and dig within us and pull some things out and implant some things, we would discover something more valuable than we have ever been able to dream of. And that is a relationship with Jesus Christ. True love relationship. And that's what I long for every person in this room here tonight, to get it, how Jesus said the most important thing is to love your Lord, your God, with all your heart, your soul, your mind, all of it. And he said, if you would do that, 
Not only can you have this amazing walk with him, this relationship with him, but the stuff that you've been longing for, the peace, the joy, all the other stuff, you'll be able to get anyway. Because look at what the Bible says. It says in Matthew 6, seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. Say everything. That means that when I seek Jesus Christ, when I go after him, not only do I get just the oil, I get all of the stuff on top of it. That means that I get all of the peace, all of the joy, all of the freedom that we've been going after. I want freedom, I want peace, I want joy, I want happiness, I wanna live this way, I wanna live that way. When you follow Jesus Christ and you love him, he will give you everything you need, everything. That's amazing. But the problem is I try to do it the opposite way. I want the freedom, I want the joy, and we're not willing to just say, I'm gonna follow Jesus at all costs. Like he told me to, get back to the directions. Stop letting your ravioli disintegrate. Get back to it. It's about Jesus. It's about loving Jesus. And when you love Jesus and you seek him, everything else is added onto you, the Bible says. What does that mean? That means that when I find love with Jesus Christ, peace comes because peace is connected to Jesus. When I find this relationship with God and I love Jesus with all my heart and I love him and I love him and I love him, joy comes, why? Because joy is found in Jesus Christ. When I love and I love and I love God and I love him, suddenly my fear starts to leave, why? Because the Bible says that perfect love casts all fear. Where's my perfect love? In Jesus. Everything is found in Jesus, it all comes back to him. We need to stop trying to do it the opposite way and make our own directions and just get back to, God, I'm gonna love you with everything that I've got. I'm gonna love you like Paul did, where he said that everything else is crap, it's garbage, because it is. It's garbage when I get to have a relationship, knowing you, connecting with you, nothing compares to it. And everything comes with it. I'm not good at math, I say this all the time, but I have a simple math problem, you ready? Seek Jesus equals I have everything. Seek anything else equals I really have nothing. Get it? Some of you are like, I don't get it. Okay, let me read it again. Seek Jesus equals I have everything. I've got everything I need. Seek anything else equals I have nothing. Can you have moments where you feel really good? Yeah. Can you have times where you feel okay? Yeah but the way to have it all and to let it last in every season, in every circumstance, is to let your heart fall so in love with Jesus Christ. Let your life fall so in love with Jesus Christ that he is the only thing that matters and everything else is garbage. Worship team, you can come on up. Everything else is garbage, guys. Now, like I said earlier, it's hard for a lot of us because maybe we don't feel that way, but it's not about feelings. We have to get that. It's not about feelings. It's about making a decision. I don't have to feel like it. I just have to commit to it. And the Holy Spirit will come and coach me and help me along the way. I don't have to muster up this love. The Bible says that we love because he first loved us. What does that mean? Because God loves me, now I can love him. I don't have to try to, oh, I'm gonna love you, I'm gonna love you, I'm gonna love you, I'm gonna love you. I have to lean into his love. And when I lean into his love, my response is love back to him. And so tonight, I just wanna, as we, as we close, I just wanna pray, and I'm just gonna ask the Holy Spirit to come and just touch your heart with the love of God and just set your heart so on fire for God that you can really say that everything else is garbage. There's nothing that I can preach. There's nothing that I can bring anybody else in to preach. There's nothing that I can have you read, that I can have you do, that I can have you say to try to force you to do this but the Holy Spirit can show you if you're willing to let him. I can't force it, I can't push it, but if you would open up, the Holy Spirit will show you how to love God the way that God desires to be loved. And then everything else is added on top of it anyway. It's really a great thing. Would you just close your eyes in this house tonight? Oh, Holy Spirit. 
I just pray that you would touch every single heart, God, and you would take us back to the beginning. Take us back to the real directions, God. And you say to love you with everything we've got, Lord. So Holy Spirit, right now, I just pray that you would unlock every heart in this room, that you would literally break off the cases that we've put up, the walls that we've put up. And Holy Spirit, you would just come in and show us how to love you in a greater capacity. You would help us with every part of our being to love you further, to love you deeper, Lord. I pray, God, all across this room that we would have a love encounter with you tonight, God, a love that changes everything, Lord. Holy Spirit, would you just show us the love that you have for us and help you to love, help us to love you in response, God. I pray that love would just reign in this house tonight. I pray love would reign in every mind, every heart, every soul, every spirit. I just thank you, Lord, that you're gonna teach us by your spirit how to love you like you deserve. Thank you, Lord. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, tonight, we're just gonna go into another time of worship. They're gonna sing. We have some people that are gonna be praying for you over on this side of the room. If you need help with anything, if you need prayer for anything, please come over at this side of the room and get prayer. Whether it's you need more love in your life, whether it's you need a healing, whatever it is, it's open. But in this time, let's just focus on him and loving him the way that he desires. Amen? Amen. Come on over. Here I come. 